Hello, and welcome to episode 175 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. I'm Kim Newlove, the host. I do a general update on my podcast each season. It's Labor Day weekend. Summer's coming to a close. So this is my summer 2022 update. If you happen to want to check out my last four updates, those are episodes 153, 136, 122, and 108. Links to all four of those are in the show notes. In this episode, I will talk about my summer, my business, the Pharmacist Voice LLC, what's coming up on the Pharmacist Voice podcast, news from my personal life about me, my husband, my kids, etc., And then we'll end with an update on what I'm listening to, reading, watching, and playing. That is actually my favorite part of the update. If you're new to the Pharmacist Voice podcast, welcome. Again, my name is Kim Newlove, and I'm the host. I'm a pharmacist by training, but I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors, provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries, and narrate content for explainer videos and e-learning projects. I was inspired by my nonverbal son, who has autism, to combine my background as a pharmacist with my speaking voice and launch my business, The Pharmacist Voice, in 2017. My son Craig helped me realize the power of having a voice and using it. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something educate in some way, or entertain so that you are inspired to use your voice too. This is episode 175, and you can find the show notes with links from this episode on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 175. Let's dive into this summer update. My summer has been pretty great. There's some ups and some downs, but I must say that one of the highlights was starting our summer with a vacation. Right out the gate over Memorial Day weekend, we went three different places. The Silver Lake Sand Dunes on the west side of Michigan, we did a lot of fun off-road type stuff, dune buggies, riding ATVs. It was a lot of fun. Then we went up to Mackinac Island. It's in Lake Huron. If you've never heard of it, it's kind of where Lake Huron meets Lake Michigan. It's kind of in between the lower peninsula of Michigan and the upper peninsula, very secluded. (laughs) There's bike trails, a slower pace of life for sure. And I would say that there are absolutely no cars allowed. So it's very different. It's like no place I've ever been. They have horse-drawn carriages people riding bikes, walking, or riding horses. It is very different. Check it out if you want to try something a little different, a little bit slower pace. We also went to the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes National Park. It's uh, up there in northern Michigan, kind of on the northwest side. It's still part of the lower peninsula of Michigan. It's beautiful. We hiked, we drove around, and we also did something that you would not think is associated with a national park. And that's because it's not. (laughs) We drove over to Traverse City and we watched Top Gun Maverick, the movie, Top Gun Maverick in an IMAX theater. And it was awesome. We do not have IMAX theaters where we are here in Northwest Ohio. So that was surely a treat. Everybody in my family loved it. There are some people that liked that movie. There are some people that hated that movie. I am in the love cheering section. I loved it. (laughs) And then on the way back home, so we live in Ohio. We were coming back from Northern Michigan. We stopped by the town of Frankenmuth, Michigan. Frankenmuth, Michigan. If you've never heard of that, it's kind of like Germany inside a city in Michigan. We stopped by the Bavarian Inn. It's called the Bavarian Inn. It's a hotel and restaurant. And okay, I'm going to try not to cry when I say this, but My heritage is German and Swiss. A lot of the menus in German and English, I grew up speaking German and English. My sister also spoke German. We learned it in high school, okay? They actually let me go in eighth grade, but 
um, anyways, we both learned it growing up and mom and dad didn't speak German. So if we wanted to say something in front of mom and dad about mom and dad, <laughs> we would speak in German. So anyways, I'm looking at this menu in this restaurant. I'm sitting at this table and I start crying and I had to excuse myself and I'm getting a little misty thinking about this, but it made me realize how much I miss my sister. She lives out in Portland, Oregon. She's a geologist. People fly her all around the place to look at rocks and soil <laughs> and all kinds of stuff and water samples, but she's no longer in Northwest Ohio. I can't just access my sister whenever I want, whenever I'm having this experience that I think she'll appreciate too. I can't just, you know... I can't share it with her. She's just not there. <laughs> so I loved Frankenmuth. We walked around. We saw fountains. If anybody's ever been to Germany or Europe in general, there are fountains everywhere. There are fountains in Frankenmuth. We had some ice cream. We looked at the sights. Uh, I think we bought some sweets at a, a bakery. <sighs> it was wonderful. It was one of the highlights of my trip. And we also went to Bronner's. I don't know if you've ever been to Frankenmuth, the town, but Bronner's is a store where there is Christmas 364 days a year. The only day that there's not Christmas at Bronner's is actual Christmas when they close down the store for Christmas. It is a great place to visit. If you're in, you know, the Michigan area, Northwest Ohio, check out Frankenmuth. It is an awesome town. And eat at the Bavarian Inn. They have murals, uh, so many things, folk tales and the Brothers Grimm fairy tales, murals all over the walls. It's amazing. The food's great. <laughs> Go to the Bavarian Inn. Now, it's hard to top that, right? That was a great trip, but after our trip to Michigan, we did a lot of great local things throughout our summer, too. We live in Northwest Ohio. There's a lot of fun stuff to do. I'll actually talk a little bit more about that when I'm doing an update on my personal life, my husband, my kids, and all that at, towards the end of the podcast episode. Now, looking forward, this fall, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I don't know if you've ever listened to my, my fall update before, but it is not fall until we've had our fall of fun in the New Love family. I'm one of those moms that like to organize a fall of fun with, you know, activities like going to Cedar Point Amusement Park for their holla weekends. They dress up the amusement park with Halloween-themed decorations and play spooky music, and it's a lot of fun, and it gets dark early, so it's kind of spooky. But other than that, we like to do corn mazes, go on hay rides, visit apple orchards, and go to pumpkin patches. If there's some local festivals, we'll go to those. Fall is fun. I love fall. I'm looking forward to all that starting at the end of this month. It is now September, so... The fall of fun awaits. Go out and have your own fall of fun too. There's all kinds of great stuff to do. Next, I would like to give you an update on my business, The Pharmacist Voice LLC. I have had a lot of unexpected and exciting opportunities come up. I originally started The Pharmacist Voice because I wanted to narrate pharmacy continuing education journals into audio format. I couldn't find a buyer. I didn't want to create the CE. I just wanted to voice it. So when I couldn't find clients, I pivoted to audiobooks and e-learning, voiceover jobs, podcasting, medical narration, and all those other projects. I am happy with where I've landed. But more opportunities keep coming my way. It's awesome. And it's exciting. I, right now, I've got some job negotiations or rather gig negotiations going on. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's exciting. All these different things keep coming my way. Now, if you're wondering if I have a W-2 job, I don't. Said another way, just so you know, I do not work in traditional clinical pharmacy practice at all. Zero percent. What I do is in the gig economy. I also recently started consulting or mentoring a pharmacist author who wants to narrate her own audiobook. I'm not going to shout out her name because I don't know if I have permission to share, but I am enjoying that process. And I'm also mentoring a pharmacist who wants to start her own podcast. I'm not going to mention her name either, but I must say that you never know where life will take you. I am loving and enjoying these new opportunities, and the variety keeps my life interesting. What else have I been up to business-wise? 
Well, I just got back from the Metapreneurs Summit, which was last weekend, August 26th through 28th in Cincinnati, Ohio, just three hours down I-75 from me. I live in the Toledo, Ohio area. Cincinnati's at the other end of the state. Three hours, not a problem, so I drove there. If you're a pharmacist who realizes that healthcare is changing and you have some new creative ideas to introduce to the world of healthcare, you should really go to the next Metapreneur Summit or join the Metapreneur's membership program. No, I am not being compensated for talking about this. It's just that I love Metapreneurs. They helped me funnel my business ideas down into one. I met some great friends. I've had a lot of the participants in the, the Metapreneurs Summit on my podcast. There's a lot of mentorship opportunities available through the, the Metapreneurs membership program. I just want to put a plug in for them. This is genuine and authentic. I, I think it's a great place to get ideas and grow your ideas and launch a business. Now, if you come to the Metapreneur Summit next year in Cincinnati, 2023, okay, I will be there. What's Metapreneurs like, you may ask? Well, we have a mixer on Friday, programming on Saturday with another mixer af afterwards, and then on Sunday, half a day of programming with an optional educational opportunity that you pay extra for on Sunday. This year, I didn't go to the Sunday offering, but, you know, some years I do, some years I don't. I loved the sessions this year. There are sessions with either, I would say, educational or inspirational speakers. My favorite two sessions this year were Kelly Carlstrom's session, get this title, design around your genius, create a business model that fits your brain and lifestyle. Loved that session. And then Michael Davis's session was my second favorite. It was about storytelling. You may wonder, what, what does that have to do with pharmacy? But I'll get to that in a minute. I just want to say that both Kelly and Michael made an impact on me. And I don't know if you're going to listen to this, Kelly or Michael, but thank you. You made me think about how I need to grow so I can communicate more effectively and continue to build my business. It was just what I needed. Let me tell you about those two favorite sessions now that I'm thinking about it. In Kelly's session, one of the exercises challenged me to identify my zone of genius. Have you ever heard of a zone of genius? It's what you're good at. It's what you're great at. It's what you're the best at. So I did it. I, I think I figured out what my zone of genius is. Do you want to know what I think it is? I think that my zone of genius includes podcasting, of course, but also audio editing, writing podcast show notes, organizing information, and breaking complicated subjects down into bite-sized chunks. You might have expected me to say that my zone of genius is talking or speaking, but what I do is more than that. If it's not evident from listening to me that I like communicating what I'm talking about and that I'm making it digestible and pleasant to the ear, well, then I'm not doing my job. What I like to do is all those things, like break things down and make it pleasant to hear about. When you are a professional voice user, your intention needs to come across in your voice. What you want people to get out of it needs to come out of it. How do you want people to feel about it? What do you want them to know? You have a way to use your voice and help people understand. Now, moving on away from Kelly's discussion, what did I learn from Michael's storytelling talk? From Michael Davis's talk, I heard a great review of many of the storytelling principles that I learned from Matthew Dix's book, Storyworthy. Storyworthy by Matthew Dix. That's D-I-C-K-S. Dix. I will put a link to Storyworthy in the show notes. Now, an example of a storytelling principle is making your story relatable. This storytelling principle, making your story relatable, is important. Not everyone has the same life experiences. Would you agree? There are certain people who fly planes. Not everybody flies planes. They can't relate to that. But what they can relate to is in the case of pilots flying a plane, 
we pharmacists can relate to having a checklist and taking your job seriously and not making mistakes and lives being at the st- at stake, right? Making your story relatable is important. That's one of the most important things that I heard about. Not everyone has the same life experiences, so you need to focus on making your stories relatable so they connect with your audience. I love that point. Other than great sessions, Metapreneurs was amazing. It was amazing just to hang out with people, see people in the hallways, pull people aside for side conversations, form little groups for lunch, talk about things that we're working on that we share common ground with, and get ideas for how to do things better. It was awesome. One of the things that I am so excited that I got to do was go for a walk with my friend Asha at 5.15 in the morning on Saturday. Saturdays are for sleeping in, right? But not at Metapreneurs. <laughs> we got to chat, get some exercise, breathe the fresh Cincinnati air. It was great. The walk and hanging out with Asha was amazing. And I am so glad that we made that time for one another. We just get so busy with life. It's so nice to just take time to be in the moment. I met a lot of new pharmacists at Metapreneurs this year. I also reconnected with acquaintances and good friends that I've met at other Metapreneur conferences over the last five years. I have gone to every single one of the Metapreneurs that there's ever been, and I've loved it, and I would highly recommend it. Now, one of the really cool things that happened that I wasn't expecting was that I got to spend time with several of the podcast guests that have been on the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Now, here's a list of the people that I'm talking about, previous guests that I can recall uh, talking with over the weekend. Sue Paul, Delon Canterbury, Dr. Bruce Berger, Michelle Fritch, Kimber Booth, Kelly Carlstrom, Lauren Castle, Janan Sarwer, Anna Garrett, Dan Krinsky, and of course, Asha Bohannon. How cool is that? I got to connect with all of them in the same space during the same weekend. What? That was amazing. I'm so glad I got to spend time with so many amazing pharmacists, podcast guests, and just everybody in general. Oh, and one other thing, I got to connect with Angela Orr. She's a pharmacist who will be on the podcast December 9th. I could talk about metapreneurs all day long. It was definitely one of the highlights of my summer, and I loved it, but we're going to move on. Next, I'd like to follow up with some things that I mentioned in my spring 2022 update in May. Now, if you listened to episode 174 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast, you will know that I am creating a new online course this summer. Actually, it should be out in the fall. It's called A Behind-the-Scenes Look at the Pharmacist Voice podcast. What's the premise of this course, you may ask? Well, here you go. Many pharmacists put start a podcast on their to-do list. Until you decide if you're going to do it or not, it's a distraction. I help you decide if you want to start a podcast or not by showing you behind the scenes of my podcast. Along the way, I ask you critical thinking questions that will help you decide what your podcast will look like if you decide to start one. And if you decide, nah, this isn't for me. I assure you, you have not failed at starting a podcast. You have finally made a decision and you need to celebrate. You've just saved yourself lots of time and money. If podcasting were cheap and easy, everyone would do it, right? By the end of the course, if you want to start a podcast, you will have a worksheet with all the details that you need to start your podcast. I will also point you in the right direction for starting your podcast, but teaching you how to start your podcast is not the intention of the course. You need to find the right coach for you. I will be mentoring or coaching a few students coming up, but my availability is limited and my students have to take the online course before I will start with them. More on that in a future episode. Just know if you are interested in this, There is more than one way to start a podcast. You first need to figure out if you want to start one. 
If you are interested in getting on the waiting list for my new online course, a behind the scenes look at the Pharmacist Voice podcast, send me a message through the contact form on my website. Just go to thepharmacistvoice.com, click on the contact tab. Other than the online course, consulting, and negotiating rates for upcoming projects, I am just about to start Tim Tippett's Audition Ready online course. This is a voice actor thing, and I guess a podcasting thing to some degree too. It will help me level up my audio engineering skills. I have been talking about doing this for a while. I bought into the course, I think in April, and I just haven't had a chance to take it yet. Uh, I only work part-time and I've got a lot of things on my plate. Not making excuses, just talking about, I am ready. (laughs) I'm excited. After I make this new online course, I am definitely diving into Tim Tippett's Audition Ready online course. In anticipation of taking the course, I'm remodeling my recording space, my primary recording space. Right now, I'm in front of my interview mic. It's an Audio-Technica 2100 USB microphone. It is not what I call my moneymaker microphone. My moneymaker equipment is sitting on the floor of my primary recording space right now, waiting for a new home. No, I'm not selling it. (laughs) I just bought a new desk, and it just came yesterday from Amazon, and I have not had a chance to put it together yet. But this new home for my good microphone, my audio interface, and all my other equipment needs to get situated before I can take this online course uh, from Tim Tippett's. I'll let you know how the new recording space works out during my fall 2022 update in November. For now, let's move on. Next topic, adding additional services to my business is not something that I take lightly, but I am creating a mic check service for my business. I mentioned this in my spring update. I'm going to be charging $25 for 15 minutes via Zoom, $50 if you want the session recorded and sent to you via Dropbox. If it only takes us 10 minutes to set up your microphone and we have 15 minutes scheduled, guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about microphone positioning and technique for the last five minutes. If you need advice on which microphone to buy for podcasting, podcasting, or online meetings, we can also talk about that. So it's 15 minutes with me, 25 bucks if you don't want it recorded, $50 if you do want it recorded. Do I have this on my website? No, not at this time. But I do have the links to schedule mic checks on my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to do that, Go to LinkedIn, look up my profile. I am Kim Newlove, and check out those links. They are Calendly links, and they do collect money. So go to those, set up your appointment today. People contact me all the time about microphone questions. I know your pain points, but I'm running out of bandwidth to do it for free. I used to do mic checks for free all the time, but like I said, I'm running out of bandwidth to do it for free. So I'm charging at this point. One last comment about my business, then we'll move on. After almost five years of being in business, I got rid of my business phone number. I used to have what I call a vanity phone number. It was 1-855-RX-VOICE, meaning pharmacist voice. I thought it was clever. (laughs) Anyways, uh, with the way I do business, I just don't need a separate business phone number. I used Grasshopper, which is an app that lived inside my phone. You just touch the app and boom, you're into your business phone. It was great. I just didn't need the number. Now I'm only using my cell phone. A lot of voice actors do that. When I first started my business, I didn't know that I was going to be a voice actor and a podcast host. Otherwise, I would have just used my cell. It's been a couple of months without that business phone number, And listen, I have no regrets. If you are on the the fence, should I get rid of mine or should I not? Just, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but it's working out for me. And maybe you could look to me as an example. Now that's all I've got for the update on my business. Next, I want to tell you what's going on with my podcast. The podcast is doing great. And I want to say thank you for listening. I just finished my 10-part back-to-school series which features interviews with nine pharmacists who teach online. Lots of downloads, lots of engagement from listeners, either by private message or social media likes, comments, and shares. 
lots of engagement, and thank you for engaging. It is so nice to know that people are listening. I appreciate you. Thank you. Now, one thing I didn't expect is that I would have people offer to be on the series even though I was wrapping it up. That's right. People were asking if they could get on it as it was being published. I wish I was that quick at turnaround time. I started recording interviews back in June for this series here in August. All I can say is that this was definitely a successful series, and because of that, I want to do it again in 2023. Dr. Delon Canterbury, you are at the top of my list. (laughs) We connected at Metapreneurs, had a great time, and I didn't even realize that he had a new online course coming out about de-prescribing. So Delon, next summer, you and me, you're going to be on the Back to School series. The series was fun. I loved it. I learned a lot. And I was inspired by others as I am building my behind-the-scenes course, too. Thank you to all my guests. I'm just going to name them real quick. Dr. Beju Shah, Dr. Blair Telemeyer, Dr. Jimmy Pruitt, Dr. Asha Bohannon, Dr. Adam Martin, Dr. Kelly Carlstrom, Dr. Stu Beatty, and Dr. Ashley Walker. Again, thank you for listening to the series. It went well. What's next for the Pharmacist Voice podcast? My 2022 production schedule is full and 2023 is already starting to fill up. Thank you to all my past and future guests. This podcast would not be the same without you taking the time to share how you use your voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain. I am excited about what's coming up. Real quick, I'll tell you what's going on. I will continue my pronunciation series. That's where I share drug name pronunciations and tips for pronouncing drug names. I also will continue my quarterly updates like the one you're listening to today. The next one, by the way, will be in November. That'll be my fall update. I'll also try to continue to alternate solo shows and interview shows. Who are some of my upcoming guests, you may ask? In September, I have two guests. There will be Simone Sloan. She is a pharmacist who is also a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant. And I also have Dr. Alex Barker, founder of the Happy PharmD, coming back. In October, Dr. Melody Hartzler will be here. Her zone of genius is functional and integrative medicine. Dr. Brian Bisher will also join us in October. He is a wellness and mindset coach who helps working dads finally feel comfortable in their own skin. Gentlemen, please plan to listen to that one. I think that will be very impactful. In November, I have two guests lined up. They are federal pharmacists. These episodes are really special to me. I just want to say that real quick. I wanted to join the Navy right after graduation, but I was disqualified medically because I have asthma. It's Honestly, one of the greatest professional disappointments of my life. Very sad. I wanted so badly to serve aboard one of the hospital ships. They are called the Comfort or the Mercy. But hey, that's how life works out. And so many other things have happened in my life. No regrets. It's a disappointment, but no regrets. Um, Anyways, about the podcast. I am very excited to announce that I will be interviewing someone who has served aboard one of those medical ships. The other guest in November is a surprise. Yes, I know who it is, but I will leave it as a surprise for you. And finally, I have two guests lined up for December. I already mentioned that Angela Orr, a pharmacist, will be joining me to talk about being in the moment for the holidays. Being in the moment for the holidays. Doesn't that sound perfect? We all need to hear that in December. She'll also be talking about something called heart math and some other topics. And finally, Dr. Nandita Kuti will be on the podcast right before Christmas, I believe on December 23rd. Nandita, can't wait to talk to you. Nandita specializes in faith-centered remote pharmacy practice. What a lineup! I am super excited about all these guests, and I hope you'll tune in to hear all these great episodes. As for my solo shows, I will keep doing what I've been doing. Definitely will talk about my new online course when it launches, but I'll still talk about the usual topics. 
being a pharmacist, being a voice actor, being a podcast host, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. Good things are coming yet in 2022. Let's move on to family news. I'll start off by talking about things in my private life before I talk about my husband and my kids. Now, I already mentioned that we did some local stuff throughout the summer after our trip to Michigan. Some of the highlights, just so I can kind of list them here, we went hiking so many different places. We have the best metro park system, I think, in the country, the Toledo Metro Parks uh, system. It's excellent. One of the parks that we went to was Manhattan Marsh. And we saw cranes, birds, you know, bird cranes, and the ponds, and it was just different. So we were checking out a lot of the different metro parks, but then, you know, other places that we hiked to. We did lots of biking. I got a new bike. I haven't had a new bike in almost 10 years. It is great. You know, the older I get, the the more I want my hand position a little bit higher. <laughs> I'm like that with motorcycles too. No crotch rockets for this girl. I need my hands up a little higher. I'm getting old. <laughs> Um, anyways, we also went kayaking on the Maumee River in Northwest Ohio. One of the places that I really like to launch the kayak is called Glass City Metro Park, one of the Toledo area's great metro parks. It's relatively new, but they have handicap accessible kayak launches. If you've never seen one of these, they are great for typical people or able-bodied people too. What it is, is it's a kayak launch that is at a slight angle downward, so you can just kind of roll yourself into the water. If you've ever tried to step into a kayak that is not on a a launch that's easy to slide your boat into the water with, you know that, you know, there's always this concern that you're going to fall in (laughs) when you step into your kayak. Anyways, these launches are the best. Toledo Metro Parks, got to hand it to you. You're the best. What else did we do? My family went to some fireworks at my in-law's house in July. My in-laws live kind of on a farm in the middle of nowhere, and shooting off fireworks is not a problem. We got rained out 4th of July weekend, so we ended up having our fireworks a little bit later in July and combined it with a family gathering. Some of my husband's, let's see, husband's cousins and an aunt came from the Boston area. We gathered. It was fun. Hey, and we can gather now. You know, the pandemic in some places is kind of winding down, but shooting off fireworks outside, pretty safe. Pretty safe COVID-wise, anyway. (laughs) Let's see, what else? My brother had his fourth and final child with his wife, and so I got to meet my new nephew. His name is Leo. Welcome to the world, Leo. What else did we do? We had a giant uh, picture session. We had a 10-person photo shoot on my husband's family's side. So my husband, his sister, our families, and my in-laws, we all had these these, uh, pictures taken. So that'll be our Christmas card photo, and we're going to make some photo books. Went well. Um, My branding photographer actually did that. It went great. Let's see, what else did I do? I went out with friends. We are able to gather again. Isn't that nice? So going out with the girls is happening again. I have a garden every year. That's been fun. We grow tomatoes, cucumbers, and flowers. Definitely love that summer activity. We go to our local farmer's market every Thursday, or most Thursdays anyway. And even though it sounds healthy, you know, farmer's market, vegetables, yeah, there's vegetables there, but who am I kidding? I'm not there for the healthy stuff. There is a lady there that has a little bakery stand, and I think it's called Sweet Stash or something like that. And she makes this item called a butterscotch blondie. It is awesome. I don't buy it every time, but when she has it, sometimes I cave and I eat it and it's awesome. And I also love getting kettle corn. We live in an awesome community. It's called Perrysburg, Ohio. If you're ever in the area on a Thursday before, let's see, October, then stop on by for our farmer's market. Now, speaking of sweets, we made the rounds to the local ice cream shops this summer. We have a local one called Twisty Treat, and that's our favorite. There's also one called Mr. Freeze. There's also Freeze Daddies. There's a place called Nedley's. Yeah, that doesn't sound like anything anybody would have elsewhere, but that's what it's called. And there's a few other ones, like Jackie's Depot. It's in an old train train depot shop up in Maumee. 
It's just across the river from me. Anyways, wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying your ice cream shops too, because they tend to close down just after the kids get into school because that's their helpers, right? That's their their staff. They go back to school. They don't have enough people to keep those shops open. And speaking of that problem, we went to the local swimming pool, Plenty, but that closes once the high school students return to school too. The kids returned on August 18th. So I think the pool closed on the 14th or something like that. So once the well, all the staff leave to go back to school, college, high school, whatever, they can't have the pool open anymore. That's just how it goes. We have a small community. But I can still swim laps at my local YMCA, and I do that uh, two to three times a week. And I'm back to my lap swimming class. It's a group class, and I love it. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I actually just swam today. Good times. I love it. Get my laps in, get a little socializing going on. Good times. This summer, my church also had their annual rummage sale, What's cool about that is that the proceeds help pay off the church's mortgage or pay for repairs, you know, air conditioners, uh, furnaces, replacing the photocopier, stuff like that. But this year, the rummage sale helped pay off the church's mortgage. It's completely gone. Now, if you go to a house of worship and you know your church's finances, you know that that's a big deal. So my church is actually having a mortgage burning celebration on September the 11th. Uh, a little dinner. We're having some of the past pastors come. I guess it's a luncheon, not a dinner, but we're going to celebrate. We're going to gather to mark this historic event. Paying off a mortgage is something to be celebrated. If you have a home and you pay off your mortgage, go out and celebrate that too. My husband and I paid off our mortgage back in March of 2019, and you better believe we celebrated too. This summer, we've also been reading plenty of books. Uh, We love audiobooks, but we also read to our son, Craig. And I'll talk a little bit about what we're reading right now when we get to the portion where I talk about Craig. We watch movies of special note. I think I already talked about we watched Top Gun Maverick. And I know the jury's out. Some love, some hate. Again, we loved it. And we just watch other movies that we see on TV. Some Some of them are oldies. Some of them are goodies. Now, let let me just tell you, I'm one of those people that likes to re-watch the movies that come prior to a movie before I watch the new version. So I watched Top Gun, the original, and there's so many other older movies that I watched this summer, and they were great. I loved it. Lots of old movies, not too many new movies. Let's see, what else this summer? I have a list. I love lists. I went to Toastmasters on Fridays, and I love Toastmasters. I gave a speech at least once. I think I went all eight weeks that my son Craig was in his uh, summer program. My husband was home, so he was able to help with Craig. That freed me up so I could go to Toastmasters. I always grow when I go to those meetings. If you don't know what Toastmasters is, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Toastmasters helps people develop leadership and public speaking skills. It is a great organization. I am part of a club in Toledo, Ohio. I would highly recommend you check it out. If you ever want to come to my club, just let me know. Contact me through thepharmacistvoice.com. Hit that contact button and let me know you're interested. I will help you find your way to one of my meetings. They are every Friday, 7 to 8.30 a.m. There's always a lot going on in my personal life. I know that was a list of a lot of stuff you may or may not have wanted to hear about, but hopefully I gave you an idea of how my summer went. I think it went well. Gratitude first. I am thankful for all the opportunities that I had and that I got to spend a lot of time with my family. Now let's move on to talking about my husband, Nathan. I'll keep this brief. Just a little bit about Nathan. Nathan left Amazon about nine months ago. After losing a job that he had for 12 and a half years with a solar energy company, he ended up going to Amazon for a little over a year, and then he got recruited by this other company to go to a small plastics company. And he likes it. He's been there about nine months now, and honestly, it seems to be a really great fit for his skill set. So I'm happy, I'm thankful, and he's happy too. Uh, Also, Nathan lost 30 pounds last year, and I'm happy to say that he's keeping it off. It's been almost a year. Way to go, honey. He doesn't listen to my podcast, (laughs) but I'm proud of him for losing the weight and keeping it off, and it's better for his health, of course. One last thing about Nathan. Nathan loves NFL football. He is getting ready for 
four fantasy football drafts this weekend. Four fantasy football drafts. That's good because last year he was in six fantasy football leagues. That's a lot. I call myself a football widow. He hates it when I say that. I love NFL football, but I have to take over. I have to make up for all the work that he's ignoring when he's doing his thing, watching the Browns or Monday Night Football or or organizing his fantasy football leagues. Not trying to complain, just saying, I know there's at least one or two girls who are listening to this saying, hey, my husband does that too. I feel for you. I'm there with you. Now a little bit about our older son, Craig. Craig is 19 years old and has autism. He is the kiddo that really inspired me to learn that there is power in having a voice and using it. He is low functioning and still in high school. He does not read, write, or speak, but he is constantly improving his skills and we are helping him reach his full potential. He uses a communication device to speak. What he does is he touch, touches a picture on his communication device, and the device speaks words. And that's what he uses to get his needs and wants met. It's very helpful. It's not perfect. Just because it exists does not mean he knows how to use it, but we're constantly trying to help him. The school's very helpful. Summer school's helpful. Everybody's trying to help him. It takes a village. (laughs) Having somebody with challenges in your life, it takes a village. Now, this year, Because Craig was supposed to graduate in May of 2022, he is called a super senior or a second year senior. Have you ever heard of that? It's what happens when you don't graduate with your age appropriate peers and you remain in school. Now in Ohio, kids with autism or kids with special needs get to stay until they're 22 if the school district identifies them as needing that sort of help. My son Craig definitely needs the support, so he is a super senior. His focus at school right now is on self-help skills and work skills. I know I talk about the negative sides of Craig quite a bit, but that's kind of to give you a picture of what we're dealing with. But I must say, there's a lot of positive things about Craig too. Craig loves hanging out with family, especially this summer. We hiked, we biked, we kayaked, we swam, we ran errands, we watched TV, we continue to watch TV, and we read a lot of books and we continue to read a lot of books. It's just he's out of the house at school right now, so it's a little bit less. Now, just like any other teenager, Craig has responsibilities around our house. He helps with laundry and dishes and all kinds of stuff. But I must say, leisure time is Craig's favorite. (laughs) He loves relaxing. Craig's pretty easy to please. We're grateful for that. Craig loved our vacation at the start of summer, and he worked really hard during his eight-week summer school program. Both of my boys headed back to high school on August 18th. Derek is a senior, and Craig, like I said, is a super senior. Now let's talk a little bit about our younger son, Derek. Derek is 17. He's a senior. He's a typical kid. He has a car and a girlfriend, and he had a blast this summer. He hung out with friends. He worked as a baseball umpire. He did some weightlifting at a local gym. He was conditioning for his fall sport, which is cross country. And like I said, he's dating his girlfriend. Her name is Sydney. They've been together almost a year now. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I'm kind of curious. She went off to college. He's still a senior. What will happen? Stay tuned for the November uh, fall update of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. (laughs) But anyways, Derek is a great kid. I'm proud of both of my boys. But it is really cool to see them grow and develop. Derek went on a mission trip to Kentucky this summer with a friend's church. They worked at a youth summer program. He came back without COVID, but there was a scare. Somebody in uh, the in the group did get COVID, but he did not. He also served as a camp counselor for our school district's sixth grade camp. So he went to sixth grade camp as a camp counselor, which was kind of cool. That was the second week of school. So I think the last full week of August, there was another COVID scare there Somebody in his cabin had COVID, and one of the other counselors in his cabin got COVID, but he did not. He missed the entire second week of school to volunteer at that camp. Who is this kid? I mean, what senior does that? But hey, I couldn't be more proud. I think that's a great choice, a great learning experience. The school definitely enjoyed 
having all these young people help out. So he's back to school this week, and he's been busy catching up on all that schoolwork. And he's back to cross country. He's doing all the things. One big thing that Derek's working on right now is applying to college. Derek is hoping to get into the University of Cincinnati's College of Engineering with his grades and his ACT and everything. I'm sure he's fine, but he still has to go through the process. You know, he's got to fill out the forms, write the essay, send everything in on time, etc. Derek wants to be a construction manager someday, and that's cool. If he ends up at Cincinnati, though, I'm just saying, if he's on campus while I'm down at Metapreneurs, I have got to connect with my kid. I think that would be really cool to drop in on him and see how he's doing. I have never dropped a kid off at college. I don't know that feeling. I have a feeling I'm going to miss him, but how cool is that going to be? I'm going to be in Cincinnati at Metapreneurs, and my kid might be there for college. That's pretty cool. So looking forward to that. That's enough about what's going on with me and my family. Next is my favorite part of these seasonal updates. This is the category where I talk about what I'm listening to, what I'm reading, what I'm watching, and what I'm playing. I'll keep it short, but for some reason, this is my favorite thing. First of all, what am I listening to? I recently finished a book called The 5 AM Club, Own Your Morning, Elevate Your Life by Robin Sharma. This summer, I also listened to Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Both of those are great books, and I'm currently listening to Story Brand by Donald Miller. This, I think, embarrassingly, is the fourth time I have listened to this book. Not in a row, <laughs> just overall. It is a great book. Highly recommend. Now, what am I reading in print? As a printed book, I'm reading American Royal by Catherine McGee. I'm reading this with my son, Craig. He loves it when I read to him, but I don't think he likes this book. This is the first book I think he really has not liked. We've read Narnia books. We've read Percy Jackson. We've read all kinds of book series, but this one is about what the United States would be like if a royal family had been in place instead of an elected president. Interesting concept but the characters fight a lot. <laughs> I don't know if that's what royal families are really like, but the characters fight a lot, and Craig can really sense the tone in what I'm reading, and I don't think he appreciates the drama. I think he really tunes into the tone of voice I use, and he doesn't like what he hears. What am I watching? I just finished the show 30 Rock with my husband. Now we're watching Seinfeld all the way through from beginning to end. We're still in like the first season or maybe the second. Our son Craig sometimes watches it with us too. And I think he really appreciates the canned laughter. You know what I mean? Like it's a laugh track pre-recorded, but he tunes into the voices and the emotions and he laughs and smiles when he hears other people laughing. It's really sweet. The next movie we're looking forward to seeing is Weird. The Al Yankovic story. If you haven't heard of this, it is it looks hilarious. Daniel Radcliffe, that's right, Harry Potter, plays Al Yankovic, and it looks hilarious. I grew up listening to Weird Al's song parodies, and I have always loved them, so I'm looking forward to this movie. Amish Paradise might be my number one favorite. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Google Weird Al Yankovic, and I'll also put a link to the movie trailer in the show notes. What am I playing? We haven't played many board games lately. On vacation, we played Settlers of Catan. We played Ticket to Ride Japan, I believe, on my birthday. Yeah, it was Ticket to Ride Japan on my birthday. My son's girlfriend also played. Good girl, like that girl. And I play Ticket to Ride on my iPad when I have time, too. The Swiss map is my very favorite. If you've never played Ticket to Ride, check out the Swiss map. That about does it for this episode. I talked about my summer, my business, my podcast, news from my personal life, and an update on what I'm listening to, reading, watching, and playing. I had a great summer, but I am ready for fall. One of our last official summer activities is going to be the Fulton County Fair. It's a local county fair on Labor Day, which is Monday, September 5th, 2022. We will eat junk food like fresh homemade donuts. We will visit the animals and see the sights. It's always a fun time. We enjoy that family time. I hope you and your family have an excellent Labor Day weekend too. Enjoy your last little bit of summer. 
Thank you for listening to episode 175 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. There will be links to the board games I mentioned, the Weird Al Yankovic movie trailer, the books I mentioned, and more. My social media links are also in the show notes. Please feel free to reach out or connect. And if you know someone who would like this episode or needs to hear it, please share it with them. Also, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks again for listening.